General Motors has done its fair share of innovation over the years. Today we'll look at some OEM features specific to General Motors. Some OEM specific features that maybe set GM apart from other manufacturers. Uh, they do displacement on demand. Now, other manufacturers also do displacement on demand, Honda's being one of them, but they do it a little bit differently than anybody else. So one version of it, one variety, is they have the, the lifters have oil pressure and there's a little spring in here. So um, the push rod can be pushed either higher or lower in this chamber, depending on where the oil is. So in this case, we got a little spring in there. Uh, at its default state, it's going to push that push rod up. And then when the oil flows to the uh, the lifter, it'll then push the spring in on either side. And then it makes that push rod push down. And then it won't be pushing the, the rocker anymore. And that essentially shuts off the um, shuts off that cylinder because the valves aren't open. Now, in that case as well, due to this, see a lot of lifter issues with these as well. So... Uh, maybe getting a lot of stuck lifters, lifter replacements prematurely more more often than you would normally. Uh, and that's just due to the way that that is designed. There is also a uh, kind of a newer version of this too. It's called dynamic skip fire. So they can actually change uh, whether or not all the cylinders are firing uh, as they go in it dynamically, as it's, as it's said in the name. Um, so it can change the torque profile as the vehicle is going down the road. Um, so they call that dynamic skip fire. They selectively fire cylinders depending on the need of the engine. Another thing that is a, a little unique to GM, I don't, I, I don't think it's 100% they're the only ones, but it is very unique, is the brake pedal position sensor. Um, so what that does is the brake pedal position sensor has two position sensors which send signal voltage to the engine control module and the body control module. The main purpose of the BPPS is to alert other drivers behind the vehicle. The vehicle is braking and slowing down, so turning on the brake lights. Modules receive the analog signals are in communication with other systems through the uh, land data communication lines that help with cruise control exit strategies, transmission control, shift strategies, ECM monitor drive cycle exit, exit strategies, and more. Uh, so it takes this information, uses it in multiple modules. Uh, down here in the tech notes is what makes this, I guess, kind of a little unique. So the brake pedal position sensor calibration is performed after the sensor, body control module, or ECM are serviced. The BPP sensor signal and the BCM data display should be less than a tenth of a volt. If not, perform the calibration procedure. And the main purpose of the calibration is to set the home value of the BPS at rest with the foot off the brake pedal. Modules in communication will use the signal to determine the driver's brake pedal application book. Uh, what you do need to do, which it doesn't say in this particular paragraph, but uh, to calibrate it, you, all, you have to calibrate it in the BCM and the ECM both separately. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to work correctly. So you have to uh, go into each module individually and do it that way. Or you can also go into, depending on what tool you have, if you have one of our tools with the service resets and relearns menu, you can go in there and it actually pulls them both in the same screen at the same time, which is very handy. Also not 100% unique, as I said, with GM, but uh, they do have a oxygen sensor heater circuit that learns uh, variable resistance. So as the resistance changes, as the oxygen sensor ages, the computer learns to increase the amount of current flow to that oxygen sensor heater in order to get it to heat up the same as it did when it was new. Problem is it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up, and then eventually that sensor is going to fail for one reason. When it does fail, you're going to put in a brand new sensor, and the brand new sensor is going to expect a lower level of current. It's going to be receiving a much higher level of current, and usually what happens is all the magic smoke comes out. So you're going to overcurrent, you know, provide excess current to the oxygen sensor heater circuit. It's going to end up blowing it up. So it actually says in here, right there, right at the top, when you're placing an oxygen sensor, perform the following. A code clear of the scan tool, regardless of whether or not a DTC is set. And then also HO2S heater resistance learn reset with a scan tool where available. Perform the above in order to reset the oxygen sensor resistance learn value and avoid possible oxygen sensor failure. So there you go, straight from GM. And that is in the tool. It's been in there since 2006 model year. So it's been around for a while.
These are some standout features of General Motors vehicles. If you'd like to see more content relating to OEM specific features, you can view them right here on the Snap-on Diagnostics YouTube channel.